Greetings, everyone. This is Fred Coulter. Welcome to Church at Home. Church at Home is sponsored by the Christian Biblical Church of God, and we are dedicated to restoring original Christianity for today. Well, we've covered a couple segments on the pedophilia within the Roman Catholic Church. And this has actually been going on for centuries. And right now it's coming out into the open and has been for a long, long time. And can you imagine how it has affected those young boys, mostly, and even girls, to have been molested by a priest whom they thought was a representative of God? How could that be? And how many lives have been destroyed? And how many families have been turned upside down? So how did it become that way? How did the lies replace the truth? Because it was really quite a sleight of hand. Now I'm going to recommend you get this book. The Two Babylons by Alexander Hislop. You can get it online or you can email us and we'll send you a copy. That shows that Catholicism is the worship of Nimrod and Semiramis. And you might say, who are they? Well, remember we talked about Babylon the Great at the end time. But how did the system begin? It began several hundred years after the flood with a mighty hunter called Nimrod. And he became worshipped as the representative of the sun. And he was the founder of all the pagan religions that you see in the world today. Because when the nations were scattered at the Tower of Babel, they were all worshiping Nimrod and Semiramis. So that's why you find the names in the different religions in the different countries in the different languages all similar. Because when God changed their language, they kept their gods, the pagan gods and idols that they had, but now they call them by different names. But it's all one and the same and goes back to the Tower of Babel and to Babylon itself, the center of the false religions of this world. Around 2800 BC, there lived a hunter named Nimrod in Babylon, which was located between the Tigris and the Euphrates rivers. Whenever wild animals threatened the people, he protected them with his power. As people respected and supported him, Nimrod became arrogant and incited people to build the Tower of Babel. Such deeds of Nimrod that were against God has continued even after Nimrod had died. Semiramis, Nimrod's wife, insisted that Nimrod became the sun god. She cut Nimrod's dead body into pieces and sent them to each tribe of Babylon. People regarded the place where a part of Nimrod was buried as sacred. She also claimed that Nimrod was reincarnated as her son. The sun god Nimrod was reincarnated as my son Tammuz. He who believes and follows Tammuz follows Nimrod. As Semiramis ruled over Babylon in place of her young son Tammuz, 
she maneuvered people into worshipping her. Monuments of Semiramis carrying her child Tammuz in her arms were set up all over Babylon, along with various images symbolizing the sun god. The sun worship and the mother-child worship, which was a scheme devised by Semiramis, put down roots as a religion of Babylon. Idolatry stemmed from Babylon spread to many countries after the Tower of Babel collapsed. It is because when the Babylonians were scattered over the whole world, they brought the sun worship and the mother-child worship. The sun worship and the mother-child worship were assimilated into the cultures and religions of many countries and they came to have various forms and names. Nimrod, the sun god, was known as Mithra in Persia, Sol in Rome, Ra or Horus in Egypt, and Apollo in Greece. Semiramis and Tammuz, who were the start of the mother-child worship, was called Isis and Horus, Venus and Dionysus, Diana and Attis, and Astaroth and Tammuz, respectively. Besides these, the image of goddess, who is holding a baby in her arms, was venerated in many countries of the world. If so, was the mother-child worship the creature of an age, which was especially welcomed only in Babylon? Surprisingly, the mother-child worship of Babylon has been passed down through the thousands of years and still exists today. In Vatican of Rome, we can find the mother-child worship in its original state. Now how did things get so upside down? Well, the answer is they left the Word of God. That happened to the children of Israel in the Old Testament. And they failed to heed the warnings of God. Let's see God's warnings to them back here in Deuteronomy 12. God warned him, because when he brought them out of Egypt, brought them to Mount Sinai, and gave them the Ten Commandments, and the Ten Commandments were always active from creation and are always active today, and we will see that the heart and core of how did it go wrong and how did it grow so big begins with that, the Ten Commandments. Now, there are other laws and statutes and judgments and ordinance that are to be understood and kept, but here is what God told the children of Israel, Deuteronomy 12 and verse 28. Okay? Now, this applies to the New Testament as well, because Jesus said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Okay, so it's the same application here. And this is where people get so mixed up and so confused because they're told, well, the Old Testament is done away, and that's the old law, and we don't need it. And furthermore, the Catholics even say, well, we could preach the truth of Christ without the Bible. Can there be any more insane statement than that, and that found right in this book, My Catholic Faith. Now, we explain more about that in this book, A Cold Holidays or God's Holy Days. How can you say you can teach the truths of God and the truths of Jesus Christ without using His Word? Não me interessa entrar nessa mentalidade de que a Bíblia é que sustenta tudo. Não é a Bíblia que sustenta tudo. É a igreja. É a fé de dois mil anos da igreja. É a grandeza. What an utter fabrication. And yet, that's the whole basis of the religion of Catholicism today. They pretend to follow the Bible, but they don't. And they repeat the same sin that the children of Israel did. Because, you see, 
they have the Bible. And if you have a Tao Wei version, if you're a Catholic, and you're bewildered by all of these things going on, and how could this be? Well, we'll try and answer those questions for you and answer the question, what should you do? Do you really want to know the true God, the God of the Bible, the true Lord Jesus Christ, the true Savior of the world? Well, we'll explain that it's possible to know. But first of all, we have to be on guard that we do not allow the teachings and traditions of men and the practices of pagan religions to influence anything that we do or say. We follow the Word of God, and that's the very purpose of Church at Home, to help all of those who are completely disillusioned with the Christianity of this world, be it Catholicism or be it Protestantism of whatever variety. And remember this, one important thing. The Lord God of the Old Testament was the one who became Jesus Christ. And the laws of God are eternal, and the laws of God never change. But here, let's see what God told the children of Israel. Verse 28, Be careful to observe and to obey all these words which I commanded you. So it might be well if you go back and read those words. And it might be well to remember while you're reading them, Jesus said, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things that I say? Okay. Now here's why. God doesn't want to burden you down with harsh, nasty commands, as alleged by the religious teachers of this world. He says, so that it may be well with you and with your children. God wants you to be blessed. God wants you to know his love. He wants to know your love to him. He wants to bless your family and bless your children. How does that stack up in the world today? Well, really not very good, does it? Why? Because everything is upside down. So God told him that it may be well with you and with your children forever to do that which is good and right in the sight of the Lord your God. That's the same premise as the New Testament. Did you know that? Verse 29, now because they were a physical nation and God was going to give them the land of the Canaanites, the, the Hivites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, and the Amorites, Canaanites, and so forth, he says, gives them a warning, because they were going to go into a land, the cities were already built, the crops were already planted, the trees were already bearing, the fruits and everything that they needed. Everything was ready for them. And God gave it to them as a wonderful and fantastic gift. So he says, verse 29, When the Lord your God shall cut off the nations before you, where you go to possess them, and you take their place and dwell in the land, take heed to yourselves. Quite a thing. In the New Testament, it says, take heed to yourselves watch out, okay, that you do not become ensnared by following them after they are destroyed from before you, and you do not ask about their gods, saying, how did these nations serve their gods that I may also do likewise? Little sidebar here that many people do not know. The Vatican is actively involved with all the other major religions of the world. And on their special holy days that they have in their religions, the Vatican sends greetings, even to the Hindus during their feast of Diwali. Now, does that sound 
like what we're reading here? Or does that sound like the opposite? And if you're a Catholic, did you even know that? Let's go on. Verse 31, you shall not do so to the Lord your God for every abomination to the Lord. Now let's just stop here in just a minute and let's review what we've already seen. Babylon the Great is called what? The mother of harlots and the abominations of the earth. So God says, for every abomination, what do you know about that? See, the New Testament and Old Testament go together hand in glove. What are the abominations of Babylon the Great? What are the abominations of the Roman Catholic Church, in addition to pedophilia? And how did it get to pedophilia in the first place? Well, the short answer is they disobeyed God by not having their church leaders marry. And the word of God through the apostle Paul says, to avoid sexual immorality, let every man, and he, uh, that also applies to elders and ministers, and another little sidebar on the sidebar, there are no priests in the New Testament church. So think on that concerning the Roman Catholic church, all right? Let every man have his own wife and every woman her own husband. That's the Word of God, New Testament. And that is the major reason you have all of this pedophilia and perversion. For every abomination to the Lord which he hates, and they claim to do it to the God. Yes. Do people do things to God that he hates? He says he does. Now, look at Tijuana, whatever it is there in Mexico, the big pyramid that is there, and the pyramids that are down in the Mayas and the Aztecs and everything. And what did they have? They had human sacrifice. And the greatest human sacrifice was a young maiden that would come up to the top uh, right up to the top of that pyramid and the priest would slice her throat and cut out her heart and hold it up in the air while it was still bleeding. Is that not an abomination to God? Yet all the archaeologists say, well, what an advanced civilization that was. No, it was hideous and satanic. Human sacrifice. Now, guess what's coming down the pike in the future? Mm hmm Human sacrifice. As a matter of fact, it's already here. You know what they call it? Abortion. Huh. Has human nature ever changed? Think on that for a minute. Let's go on here which he hates have they done to their gods, even their sons and their daughters they burned in the fire to their gods. Whatsoever thing I command you, be careful to do it. You shall not add to it nor take away from it. Now the same thing applies to the New Testament. Did you know that? Let's see a prophecy of our age here in Isaiah, the fifth chapter. Let's see why things are so far out in wherever, never, never land of idiocy and promiscuousness and crime and everything that's going on. Let's see what it says here, Isaiah 5 and verse 18. Woe to those who draw iniquity with cords of vanity and sin with cart rope. Just like it's ordinary bringing the groceries home from the plaza or the market or whatever, okay? who say, let him hurry and hasten his work so that we may see it, and let the purpose of the Holy One of Israel draw near and come so that we may know it. Now, let's look at that. A lot of people say that. Well, we want to know. Well, you know what? God answered that. 
And it's a Bible. Do you have a Bible in your house? Do you read it? Have you ever read it? Or if you have read it, did you believe that it ought to apply to you? Now, if you don't have a good Bible, because too many Bibles today leave out words. In fact, the, the New International Version leaves out 35,000 words. See what happens when evil men get in and corrupt things? This is why we have the Holy Bible in its original order, a faithful version. Sticking to the truth, the truth, the truth, the truth, the truth, nothing but the truth. And the Word of God, rightly translated, rightly understood. Now, if that's what you want, we can help you, because that's why we have church at home, and that's where you begin. Now, verse 20, Woe to those who call evil good, and good evil. Now, some things that are evil may even look good, but they're evil. Who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe to those who are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Woe to those who are mighty to drink wine and men of strength to mingle strong drink. You can add in there all the drugs, all the dope, all the marijuana, all the even prescription drugs that they have that people use because they have left God. They've turned their back on God, and they don't know what to do. And they're sick and miserable and wretched and poor and blind and naked. Yet if you tell them, boy, you better return to God, who, who do you think you are? Well, that's the truth. Who justify the wicked for a bribe and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. This also explains why we're having so much trouble. Think of it. Where do we not have trouble? Even in your own home, right? Ask yourself the question. How much of God do you have in your home? That will help you answer it. So it's up to you. God expects you to prove all things and hold fast to the truth. And that's why we give the things that we do. See? We want you to know God. We want you to come to true salvation. But you have to choose. Look at it here. Verse 24, therefore, as the fire devours the stubble and the flames burn up the chaff, their roots shall be like rottenness, and their blossoms shall go up like dust because, because. So stop and think of this. For everything that you see in the world that's wrong, there is a cause. And it's stated right here. They have cast away the law of the Lord of hosts and have despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. Have you done that? Has our, how should we say, have our towns and cities and states and the whole nation done it, the whole world? Yes, indeed. Now, how have they done that? How? Did this happen? Now, if you're hooked on your iPad or iPhone and you want a quick, easy answer and solution, I'm afraid you're going to be disappointed. The answer will not be difficult. But the solution you may not want to do because of what God requires of you to do. So that's why you need the book, The Two Babylons, and why you need the book, A Called Holidays, God's Holy Days, which, and if, you, if you're a Catholic and you have a catechism book, 
you go get your catechism book and you look up the Ten Commandments in the catechism book. And then you get your Tao Wei version of the Bible and you go to Exodus 20 and read them there. And you're going to find that what is in your catechism book is a fraud. Why is it a fraud? Because they have cast away the law of the Lord of hosts and despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. What happens because of that? We'll go back and examine it a little more in the next segment. Therefore, the anger of the Lord is kindled against his people. He has stretched out his hand against them and stricken them, and the hills tremble, and the dead bodies as filth in the midst of the street. In all this, his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. How many murders have there been? You look at Chicago, a Catholic city. Baltimore, a Catholic city. New York City, a Catholic city. Los Angeles, a Catholic city. How many homeless, how many murders, how many perversions in those cities? Have they cast away the law of the Lord? Have they cast it behind them? Are they angry because of the problems they're faced with? Yes, they are. But they don't know how to solve them because they're so corrupt. Can you imagine this? That in the two terms of Rahm Emanuel, there have been over 10,000 murders. Murders. Is that not blood in the street? That's all a part of the punishment. So what do we do? We've got a book. Lord, what should I do? And you need this book, The Two Babylons by Alexander Hislop, and Occult Holidays and God's Holy Days, which we will send them to you at no cost. And things are so bad that you need to know, Lord, what should I do? Now, if you really want to get your life right with God, this book will show you how. This is why we have church at home. We don't have politics. We don't have tradition. We don't have the teachings of men. But we do teach the Word of God. And we do teach the truth. And we do look at the news and we do look at history to see what the facts really are. So until next time, this is Fred Calder saying, be sure and visit our other website, truthofgod.org, if you want the truth of God unfiltered. There's where you need to go. We have hundreds of in-depth sermons, audios, videos, transcripts, studies. We have all total, we have 13 major books, and we have 106 transcript books with the CDs to go with it to explain every word of God rightly divided as the Bible wants it explained. So once again, thank you for watching Church at Home, inviting me into your home. So until next time, this is Fred Calder saying, so long, everyone.